Hello, I am Wander001, and this is my review of the Drobo dashboard for the Drobo 5N. Each dashboard will be slightly different depending on the Drobo model that you have. Uh, if you have a Drobo that plugs directly into your computer via USB or Firewire, you will have an option uh, to spin down the drives after a certain amount of time. With uh, the Drobo 5N and other NAS-related Drobos, this is an option that you don't get in the dashboard. So that's just a slight distinguishing feature between the two. What you're looking at here is the initial logon screen for the Drobo dashboard. It shows you down here that you have a Drobo on the network and it is green, meaning good and unlocked at this time. It will also show you in blue down here the amount of space that you have. Likewise, on the left hand side in the bottom corner, you see two lights indicating that you have two hard drives in the Drobo. It is powered on and you are using roughly 10% of the capacity of the Drobo. And I say roughly because this light's been on even before I used 10% of the Drobo's capacity. If you haven't seen my review of the Drobo 5N, I will link to it somewhere on the page. And I'm going to caveat this review with the fact that this is a review five months in the making. Um, this is my experience after using the Drobo dashboard for five months in conjunction with the Drobo 5N link on the screen. Again, back to the main logon page. You will notice health, name, and product. This is how you can organize your Drobos. You can have several different Drobos on the network at one time. I, in this case, only have one. So I will not be sorting it by name or health. Product lists them in a list view, but also displays serial numbers, so I won't be showing you that, sorry. Likewise, this list view up here does the same thing. You have icons as shown, list with serial numbers. You also have the option for Drobo discovery settings. If you click on it, it will show you options for just that, discovering your Drobo. Recommended to leave on enable auto discovery, meaning you don't have to worry about Finding the Drobo, the network and the Drobo itself will talk to each other and you will have access to it. You have the manual option of adding your Drobo by IP. Now, if you don't know how to find the IP address of your Drobo, that can be kind of difficult. There are some mobile apps that will allow you to see the IP address slash MAC addresses of all items attached to your network if you wanted. You also have the option for wired connection which doesn't really require any discovery because you just plug it in and your computer knows hey there's a drobo there this is what it is i'm going to show you access now we'll hit close go back to the main page moving to the left first item in dashboard is status you'll notice bender which i renamed the drobo is highlighted with a green halo that's how you know that that is the drobo that you have selected and then can click on status under status, you will see a depiction of your Drobo to the right, listing the size of the drives as well as empty bays that you have. General system information shows you the name, which is how you can change your Drobo's name, health, current firmware, as well as how it's attached. At the top, if you select the drop down and say drive information, it will give you drive information for each drive in your Drobo. Nice to know, but if you don't want to know, you don't have to mess with it. If you select the drop down, there's also networking information. I will not be showing you network information because I don't want to put my network information out there. Under status, you have capacity. The first page of capacity you will notice is a pie chart, green indicating the used space, white indicating unused, and the center here shows the total space based on the drives that you have. So currently I'm using 276 gigabytes with 2.42 terabytes free, giving me 90% based on a total amount of space, 2.69 that I had. Those usages are based on Drobo's software and tiering. Here you can see available for data is 2.69 in white, 2.75 terabytes is used for protection, which is why you're getting the Drobo. You want that protection in case of drive failure. The gray sliver here is overhead 
at 4.77. This is going to be your firmware, your apps, etc. This was not as large when I first started the Drobo because I did not have any apps or the current soft, uh, current firmware. The newer firmware has utilized more space, obviously. Moving down the list, we have shares. Currently, you are seeing the shares that I've set up on my network being backups, music, pictures. Public is the share that comes with the Drobo when you get it, and videos. It can automatically mount a drive letter, or you can assign a drive letter. In this case, I have V for videos, P for pictures, M for music, and B for backups. Likewise, if you want to go and adjust your share settings. This is one area that you could do it. The other area is under the Robo settings. Clicking. We are now brought to the share settings area. To start on the shares settings area, you are shown your shares on the left hand side as well as all users. You can click on a share to find out who has what type of access to it. Here you can see everybody has the pencil which indicates read write access. There's also the eyeball which will indicate read only access. Admin you can't change their level of access but you can change everyone's in one click if you wanted to. You also have the option to edit a share which is just changing its name or deleting a share. If you delete the share you also delete the content within the share. You also can add a new share by giving it a title. If it's a time machine backup, you can enable it as well as limit the size for the backup. Hit OK or cancel and that will bring you back to the share settings area. Clicking on the users up in the upper right hand corner will change the focus of the share settings to the users. So you can see that it swapped the share names for the usernames on the left and the share names to the right. If we select a user, we can see what level of access they have to each share on the Drobo, as well as we have other options where we can delete the user, edit the user, or we can add a user. You will need a password in order to create a user. Now, it was difficult to locate how many shares and users you could have for the Drobo. In fact, I did not save where I found the information, but you should be able to have 32 shares and 32 users for the Drobo. Now, just because you don't have a user does not mean you necessarily can't access the shares of the Drobo. Users just have privileges in the Drobo dashboard. Users on the network can still access the shares whether they have a username or not. Clicking onto the Drobo's app tab will show you all of the apps currently available for the Drobo 5N platform. Uh, I will just scroll down through them very slowly so you can see what's available at the time of filming. Uh, you'll notice that I do have the Plex app with this green triangle letting me know that the application is running and is perfectly fine. If you click on an application that you have installed, you can either stop the application, configure the application, or uninstall. If you click on an app that you don't have, you just have the option to install. Now you may have noticed at the top that my copy app has this circle with the X in it. What that means is there's a problem with it. So you have to click and go to configuration. Now the reason that this has the X, I know because I changed my copy password because of the heart bleed uh, bug, if you want to call it, that's been going around. And I have not yet changed the password for the app on the Drobo. Uh, clicking the config button will bring up a contextual menu box depending on the app is how you get to it. This particular app just brings up a pop-up window and I can configure it from there. Plex, however, launches a web UI so it'll start a browser and that's how you can configure the Plex app. Moving on, coming to the tools tab, this is your general location for all tools that you might need for the Drobo. Yes, I know, it's, it's self-explanatory. I'll start at the bottom and work my way to the top. The bottom here, you can see software updates, so you can manually update your Drobo or you can 
check for updates. Obviously checking for updates is much easier than manually updating. Drobo reset and repair. This is obviously how you would reset any repair. Drobo, hopefully you will never have to use this button, but if you do, this is where it's located. Here you have the restart your Drobo. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your reset your Drobo, which, no, I was right. Restart your Drobo. So it will shut the Drobo down and restart it generally when you have a firmware update. And if you do it manually, this is how you would do this. Shutdown is just that. This is the safe way to shut down your Drobo. Here you have blink, turn blink lights on. What turn blink light on does is allow you to blink all the lights on the Drobo just in case you have several Drobos in your small office or home and while you can visually using the software see the name and location of which Drobo is which on a rack or in a room you might not know which Drobo is which so by blinking the lights on and off you can see which Drobo is which now if we click on the blink light it will blink the light of the Drobo for 15 minutes so you can find it. So here we're going to see in real time. I'm going to click OK and then watch it go through the network and start blinking the Drobo. Here you can see it cycles through the red and green side lights as well as flashing the power on and off and cycling through the blue lights at the bottom which indicate storage levels. And now it's just going to blink green and red. We can likewise click the blink off. It sends the command and there you can see it stops blinking. Going to the Drobo settings general brings you into the general settings for the Drobo. Here's where you set dual disk redundancy. I do not currently have enough disks to have dual disk redundancy, so I don't have that option available to me. Here you can select disk drive spin down. You cannot select the amount of time as you can with other Drobos. However, if you check it, after a period of inactivity, the drives will spin down to save you some power. The most useful that I find is this dim lights area. You can select your level of brightness for the lights on the Drobo. If you have your Drobo in a room that is normally dark or you have somebody who's sensitive to light, you can select varying levels of brightness. If you set it to one, you will get a very low light, which is hard to pick up with just your naked eye. The camera can pick it up because it is an LED light in the back there, and the camera is pretty good at picking that up. If you turn it up, all the way to 10, you will see it is very bright and you will have no problems noticing these lights in a brightly lit room. Now for me personally, I leave it at four. It's the best blend of not being extremely bright, extremely bright, but being bright enough that I can see it in a room with sun, but not so bright that when the room is completely dark, I just have these crazy lights staring at me. The other options under the Drobo settings area are network, which I'm not going to show you because I don't want to put my networking information out there, configuring your admin. So here you have, in my case, I am the admin and my password, and I do enable Drobo apps to be used on my Drobo. And alerts. Alerts also can be found under the Drobo preferences area. So rather than just showing you, you know, the small amount of alerts, which just looks like this. I'll show you all of them under the Drobo preferences next. In the Drobo preference area, you have the option like you did on the front page for Drobo discovery settings, update settings, recommended that you just leave it at automatic because that'll save you the most amount of trouble. Here you have the dashboard on screen alerts. So you can show visual alerts. In this case, I have it set for all useful information. You can just have it for when a situation is important or if you have a, oh, there is a major situation, you need to pay attention. You also have options for enabling system tray applications, 
and enabling anonymous usage reporting. I never enable anonymous usage reporting. I'm just paranoid about that. Here you do have the area for the Drobo email alert system. You have to actually give it an email so that it will send out the email, but it will send you useful information, situations, or critical situations only, similar to the Drobo Dash on screen alerts. Last but not least, you have the help and support tab. These will give you links for registering your Drobo, viewing Drobo user guide, search the knowledge base, contact Drobo support. These will all open a tab in your web browser. Here you can also select if you forever, for whatever reason, run into a problem with your Drobo, you can select if you have multiple Drobos on your network, the Drobo that you want to get a diagnostic report from. Now this will generate a file that you can give to the support person at Drobo so that they can better assist you. It also lets you know the exact firmware of the Drobo dashboard that you're using. And that is the Drobo dashboard in a nutshell. Well, a rather long nutshell, but I tried to make this as in-depth as possible because when I first wanted to learn about the Drobo, I wanted to know not only about the Drobo itself, but also the user interface, how simple it would be for me as a not networking kind of guy. I am a tech guy, but I'm not very good at networking. I wanted to know how easy it would be for me to utilize, configure, and just make changes to the Drobo. So I hope you found this in some way helpful. I've been Wanderer001. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments or want me to film a particular part that isn't my network information, I'll do my best to get back to you if you leave something in the comments area below. Once again, thanks for watching.